Hey, Infinity Bros Universe this is Infinity Bro Max. We want to thank our official sponsors of this episode, Thy Geekdom Come. And as geeks, we have our language, we have our own culture, and now we even have our own devotional. Thy Geekdom Come is not your average devotional, guys. It is made for geeks, by geeks, with the depth that geeks need in their fandoms and one in their faith. Thy Geekdom Come, Volume 2, available now with a five-day free version. Just click the link in our show notes or head over to geekdevo.com slash infinity bros. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. Hey, welcome to the Infinity Bros podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. Welcome back. It's episode 76. We took a hiatus last week. We hope that you guys had a wonderful week off. I know I sure did. I had such a great week off that I'm back here with two more Infinity Bros today. First, the reason I needed a break, it's Infinity Bro Mark. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be feeling the sound waves of the Infinity Bros universe. Great. Super fun. Thanks for making it awkward, as always. And the other Infinity Bro here, you know him from Twitch. You know him as the Infinity Bear. It's Jarrett. It's been a bit. I think I was on one episode of the Falcon Winter Soldier, and then I kind of have been MIA for a little bit. So, yeah, glad to be back. Full disclosure, it's a flipping miracle that this episode's happening. Let me share you with you guys a quick story. So, I, my wife. My wife. <laughs> my wife has had a migraine since last Friday. We couldn't figure it out. Went to the ER three times. Did every test under the sun. Today at 4 p.m., we get there. We think it's a spinal leakage bit don't know where mark mark you me and jared are texting we're like is this happening is it not we don't know doctor gets in there gives a spinal is it tap mark or is it a spinal patch i forget what the term well you said is. you said patch so it's like i don't know the procedure you had i've had a spinal tap for a similar thing when i was in sixth grade i didn't get my issue the way she did though yeah it's it was a blood it was a blood patch i'm just looking back through the or through our text messages a spinal blood patch she laid back and a seven day migraine that she called a 10 out of 10 when she stood up and sat up was gone. Wild. Wild. It's crazy how that works. Buck wild. The body Science works. is crazy, man. And the body. The body is remarkable. So if you're wondering if that's a sign on whether this episode should be happening, the answer is yes. Mountains were moved metaphorically. Did course. I buy a lottery ticket today? Yes. <laughs> yeah should sarah have gotten a lottery ticket yeah did we burn all our luck on that maybe maybe we didn't so congratulations to my wife who can now sit up and stand up for the first time in a week uh we got a jam-packed show for you guys today we're obviously going to pick up where we left off on our itunes reviews so grateful for you guys that left those we're going to share a couple of those we're going to talk about the brand new mcu showcase that was through a trailer we're going to talk about those dates what we're excited for what we're mad about we're going to get into Invincible. We're going to rate that in the season finale, what our thoughts about season two need to be. And I know you guys watched Bad Batch episode one, so we're going to get to hear your thoughts on that. And it's going to be a great episode. We're going to close out with our top five moments uh, from the MCU announcement. Uh, Jared, uh, uh, how pumped were you for Bad Batch this week? Obviously, we'll talk about that towards the end of the show, but I mean, you had to be pretty pumped about that right after talking to Winter Soldier. We were, we were talking about like, what are the next steps for the podcast? What are we going to talk about? And then we all kind of collectively, I don't remember who said it first, but once we all figured out, we're like, oh, it's May the 4th. May the 4th is when they're dropping Bad Batch, which was fantastic. And um, yeah, it like I came into it a little hesitant because if you're a fan of these these uh, cartoon series that Dave Filoni does, they're always fantastic, but they always take a bit to get there. Um, he starts them off really slow, usually in the first season. But this, like, hit the ground running. It's fantastic. Yeah, I cannot wait to talk about it some more. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing you guys' thoughts on the back end. We will talk about that. But first, let's get to our iTunes reviews. As always, you can leave us an iTunes review. Right now, we're doing a giveaway. If you leave an iTunes review and you let us know that you did, 
you get entered into a drawing to win an exclusive Infinity Bros gauntlet. So make sure you do that. You can also leave a review on Pod Chaser. Click the link in our show notes or go to one of our socials and click our link tree there. We got a new link tree, Jarrett. So now, now, now all of it's consolidated on one link. We're so fancy. They can just find us and, and get there and everything I know. they need. The show right notes are about to get reworked. The Love show notes that. will get reworked. They will be much less now. Moving forward. It's going to be sweet. This first one comes from a dear friend of ours. Uh, allegedly, he Mark wants to leave our podcast to join and start a super podcast with him, Matt Williams. Five-star review. The Infinity Bros podcast is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to and beyond. Like, I'm beyond, not like beyond. Uh, consistent content with varied hosts and opinions keeps everything fresh and enjoyable. Keep up the great work. Jarrett, were you able to wire the doge that we promised Matt for leaving that review for us? Were you able to get that into his uh, his crypto wallet? Yeah, see, the thing is, I was like mid-transfer, and all of a sudden, Zane popped out of my closet and just knocked me unconscious. And um, I think he was a little frustrated for how you guys used and abused him on that episode. Uh, so Zane took off like a bandit, like the Hamburglar himself, with all of that Dogecoin. So uh, it wasn't for lack of trying, but yeah, ultimately did not make it through. Mark, are you going to make a joke to piggyback off of Jarrett referencing Zane in a closet? No, I think that uh, that was all that needed to come out of Jarrett's mouth. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, Matt, <laughs> thanks for the review. It was a great review. Matt, just know that our slander of Zane does not represent how we feel about your review. It was wonderful. Uh, the second one comes from our Apple podcast. This one comes from at Nova Beyond. Jared, who's this person? Uh, beats me. Oh, I thought we knew who that was. Okay. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I like literally asked you that thinking, oh, no, Jared, Jared knows that guy. We, he's on Discord. <laughs> it probably is somebody important to us. And like, I just don't know their like tag or whatever, but. For sure. Let us know who you are so we can celebrate you. It's also a five-star shocker. Balanced, as all things should be. This podcast is balanced, as all things should be. Podchaser only allows for five stars, but the Infinity Bros definitely deserve a six out of six. This nerdy podcast is my go-to podcast, especially when they review a Disney Plus episode or series. Well, good for you. That's going to happen this episode. Love that. This is one of very few podcasts I look forward to every single week. Keep up the great work. That's back-to-back keep up the great works, Mark. Are you sensing a trend? Do you think we should keep up the great work? I think we should keep up the great work and not disappoint this person if they look for our podcast every week and we didn't give them one last week. I was going to say, do you think last week he was like, oh, man, no podcast. The work has not been kept up. Well, if this ever happens again to this person, they should just reach out to us and we'll call them and we'll do an impromptu phone call for we'll we'll catch about the stuff we watched that week real quick jared i want you to rate from six to one who you would who you would least like to hear from from the infinity bros from an impromptu call and why is zane number one (laughs) (laughs) zane is not number one number one would be mark i feel like mark is the kind of person that would randomly call me on a tuesday and be like look you said something kind of sad on twitter are you okay bud I feel like Mark's that kind of person. Number two would be Isaac, just because Isaac has one of those like really soothing voices where like no matter how bad things are going, you're you're feeling good after a phone call with him. Do you think Isaac has ever raised his voice to his wife? I feel like it's never gotten above a hey now, hey now. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe maybe a brief like knock it off to his kids, but I feel like nothing beyond that ever. He did that sad father bit. Mark, you'll get this someday. But yeah. you know when you put your kid to bed at the end of the night. Then you're sitting there and you see like a shirt on their couch. Yeah. You start tearing up thinking about all the things you, sh- you could have said or done differently. I feel like that'd be Isaac in that moment. <laughs> Isaac just like the most mild grumpy. And he's like, oh, it was horrible today. <laughs> yeah, he's like, could have been better. <laughs> Probably Zane. Just to hear him like talk nonsense. Then, then Robbie, right? Robbie, I feel so like. Are you putting me at six? Is here's, that what you're telling me? Yep. And here's why. Well, I mean, technically five, because I'm not calling myself, but sure. Well, no, you can. I mean, sure. Uh, And the reason you're last is because every time I see the phone call from you, I'm like, oh, shoot, I did something bad on the podcast. (laughs) And Max is about to rip me a new one. That's not true. Last time we spoke, we spoke for 30 minutes on a very serious issue. It was a great conversation. I was still heated, just not at you. Yeah, yeah. And we will leave it at that. 
You've never, and it, here's the thing is, you've never called me and had a bad conversation. You've never chewed me out. But every time I see your name pop up, I'm like, crap, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel like every time I get a text message from Mark. There you go. <laughs> I'm thinking back to everything I've done wrong ever. And I'm like, oh, Mark's finally, he's coming to cash in. Oh, Today's dad's mad again. <laughs> here's my receipts. Yeah. <laughs> Max, um, I believe that. You may be I need to return <laughs> my friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Man. Well, uh, make sure you uh, leave us an iTunes review or Pod Chaser review. We want to make sure that we read those on the air. We are trudging <laughs> along. Uh, Matt Williams left us his review at three sixteen a.m. Holy cow, Matt! Get some sleep, bud. <laughs> Go to bed. Does Matt. that show up as as Central Time? Because for him, that would just be one. That would be Eastern Time, which is his time. Oh, that's right. That's right. Go to sleep, Matt. Go to sleep we're gonna go ahead and talk about the mcu news we want to make sure that you though are familiar with our rating system so we're going to go ahead and put that bumper for that right here here on the infinity bros podcast everything is ranked from a zero to six point scale zero meaning horrible and six meaning absolutely excellent if all of the infinity bros rank something a six it gets an infinity step we might talk about some spoilers for specifically Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and I know that there are some reports that aren't public in regards to costume designs, things like that. So just a general overall spoiler review for that, Invincible and Bad Batch coming your way right here. This is... Prepare yourself. An Infinity Bros. Prepare yourself. Spoiler. Order. All right, guys. So I guess Marvel just decided to drop a random MCU phase four trailer on a Monday night. What on earth? Like, what was your thought seeing this drop and seeing all of these announcements? Well, it seems like it was more planned, Max. I'm sure they weren't like, hey, Billy, go throw some stuff together Sunday night so we can drop this Monday. <laughs> yeah, but like, why on a random Monday? I guess is my question, Jared. What do you think about this? Like, like why that day? Did did they feel like DC just had too much power, or like <laughs> were they like, oh, we just haven't talked about ourselves enough lately? Like, what do you think? Obviously, DC's been trickle feeding stuff for a while, and maybe that's some reason behind it. Obviously, we're getting some news about a black Batman or a black Superman and some of that other stuff. But I believe this was before that news dropped, and yeah, it was the weirdest timing because. I didn't catch all of this as it was dropping. In fact, I didn't see any of this till Tuesday morning because I was just like nose to the grindstone getting work done Monday night. And I'm like, what the hell? Well, where did all this come from? Um, yeah. I'm just glad somebody on our podcast was working, was actually working and doing their job because the rest of us appeared to be seeing this. Um, these were the trailer. The, the trailer was essentially a three minute trailer talking about what happened. Nostalgia filled. And then, of course, it dives right into Black a Black Widow and Shang-Chi, Eternals, and gives us those trailers slash first exclusive looks with Eternals. And then we get Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Mar- the Marvels, which with all the different logos of Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Oh, and on top of it, we get a Fantastic Four logo. We don't get anything about Blade. We don't get anything about some of the other Marvel Disney Plus shows that are coming, i.e. She-Hulk. This was just really fascinating to me how they dropped this all at the same time. Mark, for you, just top of your head, what stuck out to you the most from this trailer what is the film today that is the most anticipated for you after seeing this complete phase four collection? You just want to give away my top five right off the bat, bro? Well, I mean, I guess for the top five, it's kind of more of like, what are the top five announcements for you? I okay. mean, I, I guess for me, I look at those as those could be two different things. What you're most excited for and what the announcement was to me are two different things, but that's up to you. What got me more hyped for shows were was the Shang-Chi movie Shang, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi my bad you're good I'm way more interested in that movie than I think anything that's coming out this year tell me more I don't I just feel like we're, we're getting a better 
kung fu Marvel movie out of this, and I think what I've understood they're they're retconning, um, the Mandarin to be Shang Chi's father. Am I am I right on that? That is correct. They did reveal that in the in the first Shang Chi trailer. So I'm kind of excited to see like is that a red herring? Are they gonna swerve us again with the, the Mandarin? Um, and like you know, from what I've seen, it's not actually ten rings on his fingers. It's like you know bands and stuff. So it should really be the 10 bands, but I hate I, that. I, I digress. I didn't like that, but I think they'll probably make it practical more than mystical maybe. So we'll see. And they'll probably make it better than, um, Danny Rand as the, you know, what we got from Netflix from Kung yeah, Fu but Danny movies. Rand and Shung Chi are two completely different characters with different origin stories, but I understand they're better, totally different characters, but I think we're going to get a better Kung Fu esque movie or, you know, that type of yes. genre movie out of this. And I, I'm just, I have like a secret love for Kung Fu movies. So like, I'm excited. That's why I think my hype's more for this one. Who doesn't like a good Kung Fu movie though, yeah. Mark? I mean, everybody likes Kung Fu, right? Like, and if you don't, you're lying. The best Kung Fu we got from the Marvel series on Netflix wasn't even Iron Fist. It was Daredevil. It was this hallway fight scene yeah. in the first season. And like, I thought they were going to roll with that all through Iron Fist and they let us down. No, Mark, you're hundred percent correct. Like if they do this well and we get a good Kung Fu movie, that's, a thousand percent where my head Aquafina is. Aquafina is also, and I know we didn't talk about the Shang-Chi trailer. We got caught up in a lot of other stuff. Aquafina is a perfect pairing to this. Like, I just, I just think this is such a great cast. I really, 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 I'm with you, Mark. I think the Kung Fu stuff looks dynamite, but I love how this opens up a corner of this universe that has not even been close to touched. And I know that there are rumors right now, little bits that, Tony Stark's AI might come back for this. There's an apparent release of a toy right now that has Tony Stark's AI, and this could be the way that they're going to talk about Riri Williams or how they get Robert Downey Jr.'s new role in this MCU hypothetically in this. I I don't know how much that's true. I wonder if that's just Marvel being goofy and quirky. We'll see. What's really fascinating to me again, and, and I'm interested to hear your guys' takes, did this increase, decrease, or stay the same for Black Widow, Jared? I'm so over this by now. Like, any hype that I had for this movie has been killed over time. And I think part of that was, like, I was really hy- hyped for New Mut- Mutants. And that got strung along. And then the final product that we got was so chopped to pieces. I know that was a deal with Fox and Marvel. But it was so chopped to pieces and hacky that I it just killed my excitement for anything that's been produced and set back because of COVID. I, I, Mark, what about you? I would say my hype was at the the height when, um, gosh, when did Mulan get put on Disney plus? I, like my hype was like, why not do black widow then? And now I'm just like, just give us, just put why, why wait? Why wait until July to put black widow out? I just agree. give it to me now. Like I'm going to pay you 30 bucks. I probably would see it in theaters if I lived if now if I lived close to a city that had a movie theater, but I, I love that that's an option. That I get to pay thirty bucks just to watch it from home. But I, just it's the give future it to me of now. cinema, right? Like that's oh, that's the direction we're heading. The future Everybody is has now, nice Max. Now. Future is now. You're right. I I I'll be real with you. I, I wish Shang Chi was the first one of this phase. I think you're right, Jared. I think, unfortunately for Black Widow, this is not the fault of the team behind Black Widow. Oh, and I would double down on that. I think Black Widow, I'm not, this, I'm not taking away from how good Black Widow I think is going to be. I'm just like, my when you we just talk about pure hype, that's where I'm thinking. Yeah, I, you I, just given I agree. I think they should have given it to us. Delaying it a whole yeah, year. They should have given it to us when everybody was trapped in their homes. I think that's when they needed to do it. I think everybody would have still watched it. And I think Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision are yeah. proving that right now. Everybody watched it week to week there, and I think they would have done that then. I think Black Widow still will be a very strong film. My hype level is lower for it, however, simply from a marketing COVID perspective. I really am rooting for this movie, though. I want it to be good. We need more female leads in the MCU. I think that's big. And Scarlett Johansson absolutely deserves a solo film. Uh, like, no question she deserves it, especially the way her emotional arc for her character in Endgame was very fulfilling. So I feel like that that earns it, this, this opportunity. Let's talk about Eternals, these, this brief clips here. This has been the wild card of this whole list to me, Mark. The Eternals is the one that I look at and I go, 
this is either going to be a bombshell or this is going to be potentially abysmal in the first misstep. Obviously, Chloe Zhao, who just won Oscar, uh, won Best Director for Nomadland. By the way, I've watched Nomadland. I'd give that a five out of six. I think it's a great film. Go check it out. You can check it out on Hulu right now. Uh, does this propel Eternals for you? I know our group isn't the biggest on the Oscars, but do you think that the Eternals is going to be something surprising. There have been reports and rumors that this film will be the crown jewel. There are people that are like, Marvel is floored by this. They want to work their whole future around it. Where are you sitting with Eternals? <laughs> the chef's kiss of the Marvel of Phase Now, four. my question to that is who's the one saying it, but Absolutely. there are people saying that. This is what I don't like about the hype being, you know, ra- or the bar being raised that high is it's, there's a very it's a higher percentage that goes under the bar and a lot of people are like it's not as good as they hyped it up to be and you know i go around if kevin feige's involved it's gonna be a good movie it's gonna be a marvel movie it's gonna be uh, unless it's wandavision <sighs> wow chloe Zhao has been one that they've been talking about in my community for a while she did a a movie called i think it's songs my brother taught me it's about a native american community and like people love that movie and and she's like continued to produce these great hit, great hits, and I I wish I I had saved the source, but I saw that even Kevin Feige made a comment on like her using practical effects in her in her shots, and he's like, wow, this is something like I didn't know you could do these sort of things with cinema. If that's if I'm remembering the quote, well, correctly. and 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 like they, the fact that you that take in somebody the, in this first look, Jarrett. So that shot on the beach, right, with the sunset right behind the two characters shaking hands. That's a natural effect shot. It looks great. And I think like she's she's shown to critics that she can do well. She's shown to Kevin Feige of all people that she can do well. Obviously, we love her work or we wouldn't be talking about it. People have been hyping her up for a while. And like the fact that they got the cast that they did for this, Marvel's yeah. been knocking it out of the park with casting for years. But like, man, they are just like slaying a star studded cast for sure. Mark, what's a bigger story here? Chloe Zhao winning um, Best Director. Or Camille Nanjiani basically turning into Dave Bautista. Well, that's not a fair which one's better because they're both great. They're both amazing in their own right. I would say it's it's Chloe winning. For sure, but it was it was a bit. I mean, that's fine. It's her, you, it's her wanna, winning best director. I'm sorry I offended it's you her with winning the best director joke. because, you know, look at Chris Chris Pratt was, you know, a huskier dude and you know, you get huskier. you get Camille Nanjiani wasn't even husky. I'm just saying he wasn't even what, like you didn't fat. let me finish, you just interrupted Max. So just like if you get the call to be an MCU movie, you just get a trainer and a fitness plan right away and you get in shape and people who you go to Silicon Valley. It's, I mean, yeah, Camille wasn't right. Am I saying that right today? Right. Camille Nanjiani. Camille Nanjiani. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't like a husky yep. dude, but you know, he probably is, you know, just a regular didn't probably didn't work out. And now he's like this giant buff dude. And like, you know, listening to like reading about him. It's like, he's like, yeah, I've just decided to keep working out because it's like, you know, keep the bodies and you know that probably means he's in future stuff so oh yeah he is definitely being on a podcast yeah. with you two is like is like sitting at the dinner table while mom and dad are fighting <laughs> um, you didn't even let me finish my my point about wandavision you just deep sighed and then Jarrett came right in and kept it going like, <laughs> i was I gonna let I you finish because you know everyone needs to hear how much you hate wandavision now because it wronged you it gets collectively it wasn't, worse it wasn't we 70 time. minute long episodes Curse it didn't have know? it didn't have Boner! dr strange in every episode it didn't have wakandans in every episode uh old young and new cap weren't in wandavision it, like i know why you hate it <laughs> heaven right. forbid max gets everything he wants out of wandavision <laughs> Jarrett, what surprised you more? Black Panther being called Wakanda Forever or Captain Marvel 2 basically becoming a team-up movie? Yeah, I would have never called Black Panther 2 being Wakanda Forever, but it's so perfect. Like, it is literally the perfect title. And obviously, we're super excited to see what that looks like going forward. And there's a bit of sadness in that and the tinge of, like, you know, missing Chadwick Boseman and all that he represented but we're excited for that. But the Marvels for me is like absolutely out of left field. I would have never called this. And they were setting it up to some degree. We knew that, you know, with Miss Marvel coming and obviously we have uh, Spectrum on the menu here. 
we we knew something like this, some sort of team up was coming. I think somebody said A team or A Force. What are they called in the comics? A Force. A Force. We knew something like this might have been coming, but the fact that Captain Marvel Two is this, it has brought my hype level for that movie up quite a bit. And I'm one of the few. I'm maybe not max level, but I'm one of the few that defends like Captain Marvel isn't as bad as people give it credit for. But having the Marvels is wild to me, and I love this. I love. I'll this keep that so point much. going here in a bit, but I want to hear Mark first. Mark, what what are your thoughts on this compared to Black Panther? Oh, I'm super pumped for Black Panther. That's. Yeah, hey, I don't think anybody's not right. Yeah. I I think everybody is kind of like this is great. Would you agree that the the title is perfect? I just hope Val Kilmer shows up. Hope Batman Val okay. Kilmer shows up and we get a. <laughs> it's not only Wakanda Forever; it's Batman Forever. <laughs> part two <laughs> the snyder cut love that you want uh black panther nipples? love that hey the romans did it so you know oh man there you go wow. and i'm just happy that we're gonna get a captain about marvel movie left field, Jared. that we're gonna get a captain marvel movie that's actually tolerable and yep. we actually have a, you know actual characters oh, okay. that and actresses and <laughs> actors right, that can go. actually let carry me, a movie let me I go ahead wait. and step in on this i'll answer the question that i asked first <laughs> i am more excited for black panther because it's going to be Black a better Panther, movie. Wakanda hands down. Forever. I'm interested to see what Ryan Coogler does. That might be the most risky film to make up to this point, in my opinion, simply because how do you do it without Chadwick Boseman is the biggest question okay. mark. I, I, I've been, I've been mulling on this. I think there's enough time that's been passed. I know he died of cancer, right? Like we, we know this. Yes. I think you, you, you find a way to have T'Challa kind of go through the same thing. Like there's some super cancer that can't be cured, and that's how you have him. You don't have you don't have to have some evil force kill him. You don't have to have him go off in the in the world. It's like it's a real world thing, and that's how you can tell that story. I don't know. We'll see. I I just I don't know. That's been my thought. My thought the last few weeks. Yeah, I get that. I honestly, Mark, I'm with you. I don't think it'd be bad for them to let that character pass away, and in the Black Panther lore that's they, they they death is death is not the end right yeah. that, that, that's the quote from civil war so i i mean i i don't think it would be in bad taste i wonder what a lot of fans would think and i certainly wonder what the cast and crew think this seems to me like ryan coogler had to ask a lot of opinions but i'll tell you what if there's a director i trust it's ryan coogler to me he's top three top four in terms of directors in the mcu so I trust his judgment. I trusted him outside of the MCU. Nobody knows the vision behind Black Panther and what it meant to Chadwick Boseman more than Ryan Cooper. Like the, the conversations that they had in the interviews, like those two had a very personal, close friendship, and he knows exactly what Chadwick would have wanted. And they I built the world that. within this already massive universe. And it, Wakanda right. just is different. It's just a different part of the MCU yeah. in a very, very good and strong way. So this is a task. I do not envy Ryan Coogler. I cannot believe it's going to be two years from now that we're going to see it. Like that, that turnaround is so quick, pretty remarkable. It's, it's, it's bold. Was it 2023? 2022. So it's not even Max. Oh yeah. You're right. right. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, wow. I, yeah, we're, that's already what I was into, that, I was, we're already into May. I wasn't we're already into May sure, of 2021. Like, oh, hang on, wait, wait. Boy. I thought that was 2022 for Black Panther. For the kind of I was like, that's coming out next yeah, summer, time. bro. Yeah, that's well, we'll talk about that in a sec here about how close these dates are. I want to talk about Captain Marvel. This is absolutely abysmal that they're calling this the Marvels. Well, they just want to. Captain Marvel is a strong character. I'm, I'm going to defend it. Captain Marvel is a strong character. Yeah, of this is them is. giving a lot of credence to Miss Marvel. I can understand Spectrum, but if Miss Marvel comes out, and I, I'm not anticipating it will, I think Miss Marvel is going to do fine. I'm excited for that show. If that show does not come out and deliver, and the Marvels is your title, I'm going to be frustrated. I think Captain Marvel deserves more. I think this is a response to the public's view of Captain Marvel, and I wish, I wish that. I wish that Kevin Feige and his crew would have the same set of stones they did with Ant Man. The same set of stones they had with Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3, which those movies weren't great films. They they didn't do a great job. The Incredible Hulk. Well, that's, I mean, I think what you're arguing isn't necessarily the like the actual characters themselves, the writing. 
it is the person who is playing the character that I think a lot of people have an issue for, and the way that person acted is kind of what kind of dragged that movie. It's all the above. I think because we I know think Captain Marvel is super the story, powerful, and then people introduce- criticized it for being a film about gaslighting. Yeah, people criticized it for Brie Larson. For did she like the cast? Did she not like the cast? I think that's all overhyped. They've said out loud that it's overhyped, but nobody's going to believe it. I'm not thrilled about this being called The Marvels. I think it's still going to be a great film. I'm excited about Spectrum. If you've listened to our WandaVision stuff, one of the best parts of WandaVision for me was Spectrum. Or full time. I'm pumped that she's coming back. I bet she's going to be in Doctor Strange even. like that. Just She just seems like a character that's going to come back frequently to me. I think Carol Danvers was rushed in to begin with with her first Captain Marvel movie. It was right between Infinity War and Endgame. I I wish that Marvel would give her the same opportunity that they would give an Ant-Man, all these other characters that didn't do as well maybe right out the gate but got more opportunities. I, well, I just, Ant-Man 2 was Ant-Man and the Wasp, so what, what do you want, Max? I, I want it to be Captain Marvel. It still says Ant-Man. It's not The Marvels. Well, it's Ant Man still is the star. It's not the Marvels. The Marvels just groups them together. Whatever, bro. I don't like it. Then go. Don't then like don't go it. see it because it's probably not going to Doctor Strange. It's probably I'm going be, to see it, Mark. You it's probably I'm not going to be long enough for to... you. You're probably not going to enjoy the ending because you wanted it a certain Gosh, way. I have any. I have any criticism of the MCU, and I just get blasted. No, 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 no. The way you went about WandaVision is how I'm going to keep up the charade. <laughs> no, WandaVision's full of crap <laughs> yeah, because whatever, bro. that article. Grow up. So I'll put this in the show notes. The article <clears throat> that came out saying that Doctor Strange was the one doing the commercials, and Kevin Feige decided to pull back on it because that would have taken too much away from Wanda Maximoff, is an absolute joke. It's one of the biggest missteps. That's abysmal. If Kevin Feige really was the person that decided that, it's a bad call by him. Then, we, then they should fire Kevin Feige. <coughs> no, actually, on the contrary, <laughs> I'm happy to see that Kevin Feige did it because it means he's human. Okay. Okay, Max. Let's move on. He's, not, move he's on. literally, because up to this point, he's pretty much beat for beat, and he missed that. He missed on that. That was a big miss. I hope just to, like, enhance our content and to give mark like so much more fire to work with i hope the last line in the marvels is they'll never know what you said oh, <laughs> I, would just, I, I like i, I would, would love just. that so much <laughs> Ugh, you oh, you enslaved Jared. the whole they'll, town they'll you enslaved know. the whole town and almost made them kill themselves but you'll never know <laughs> they'll, never, they'll know. never know oh my gosh that would be my shut gift to you, Mark. Up, Marvel. Shut up. You're diluting <laughs> WandaVision the prop. Is... You're diluting her issues, Max. Jeez, she. I'm not. Yeah, you I'm are. I'm saying Stop you, you, me. you can have problems, but you are not <laughs> allowed to enslave an entire town over hey, those problems. Crap happens. That Max. is my Get line in the sand. Sorry, that's a pretty, pretty long line to get to there. Get out of here. Whatever, bro. Get out of here. You don't even mean it. That's the part I hate. I, the part, that's that's the part I yeah. love. Speaking of gaslighting, <laughs> here we are. We're destined to do this forever, Max. <laughs> you know, this is our song and dance on this podcast. All right, Zane, let's go in our room. <laughs> I'm going to fight you. <laughs> um, release dates. We, talked, we, we alluded to it on the front end. Uh, Black Widow, July 9th, 2021. Shang-Chi, September 3rd, 2021. Eternals, November 5th, 2021. <coughs> Spider-Man, No Way no way Home, December 17th, 2021. Doctor Strange, March 25th, 2022. Thor, Love and Thunder, May 6th, 2022. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, July 8th, 2022. The Marvels, Captain Marvel 2, November 11th, 2022. And Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania, February seventeenth. Wow, they're taking away a lot from that. Well, what's Quantum Mania? That's just you know diluting Ant Man. So that's that's how stupid you sound, Max. <laughs> he needs to be it the star. Be just, it has to be yes, Ant Man. It the just Quantum has to be Ant Man in all bold letters <laughs> and caps, and then little tiny writing Quantum Mania. All I'm saying is if the, if the Marvels is not a Captain Marvel center film, I'm gonna be bummed. I'm gonna be upset. Is this encouraging to see them jamming so much in t- into our faces the next two to three years, or is this discouraging? I want it all, because that's that's just the movies. Think about all the t- like the Disney Plus shows we're gonna get out of it too. I know we're not even talking about yeah. that. We've been sitting on like this this no man's land for some time, 
And like really the only movies that have come out are like what New Mutants and what else has come out during quarantine? And New Mutants was a Fox joint that was chopped up to pieces by Disney. It wasn't the, even the like Snyder cut thing. Yeah, but that's not that's not Marvel. I mean the that's Disney Plus Disney. shows, the Disney Plus shows. The, exactly right. Like we've been we were supposed to get Black Widow. That never happened. We and I feel like we've been sitting and waiting for so long. Anything Marvel? Mm-hmm. They took away our supply and just let us get strung out. Now we need it. Well, I mean, honestly, as weird as this sounds, COVID might have helped Marvel in the long run because the. I think you're right, Mark. I, I know you made the joke, but I do think demand is high. And I think it, it pushed Sony to give more creative control to Marvel for Spider-Man. It's I'm not again, I wasn't thrilled with every choice they made in the Disney Plus shows, but I appreciate that they're swinging for the fence. You, you weren't what they're swinging for the fence. I appreciate that. They're making bold choices. And I think that's going to be good for them in the long run, especially phase four is like it will going outside of the norm to kind of tell different stories in different ways and getting great directors and actors and writers and, you know, cinematographers and all that jazz to make some really good movies. Watching Marvel do this right. And, and watching the success of the Snyder cut, how do you as Warner brothers not say like, okay, we can, we can play with this a little bit, right? How do they continue to have the business model that they have knowing that, all the all the long shots that Marvel's been doing have been paying off this much. The the apparently there's a fight between the brothers of Warner, and they both are just stupid and don't let people just be artists and actually make good stuff. They want to have eight people involved in movies, and just really tear stuff down, and then hire people like Josh Whedon or Jared Whedon or Joss Jackface Whedon, um, to you know just do crap stuff. So you know nice. whatever. <laughs> Honestly, Jared, I think it's a better comparison to compare your favorite TV show to Marvel than it is to compare DC. And sure, that hurts my that. That hurts my heart. I, but it's, I, I it's think true. like <laughs> you look at Breaking Bad, Sopranos, Lost, Mad Men. Depending on, on what shows you like, I mean, just like Solar Opposites, you know, Solar Opposites, <laughs> season two, Solar Opposites, <laughs> Family Solar Guy, Opposites. Love that. Simpsons, oh, South Park. Wow. No, um, let us know what you guys think. Check us out on Discord. All these links are in the show notes, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure you let us know what you think about the MCU. We're going to be there day one, and a lot of it's going to be on Disney Plus, too. So it sounds like if you can't get to a theater like Mark, uh, you're going to be able to pay for it at all. I mean, I could, but I don't really want to drive an hour to, like, a nice movie theater. So Drive an hour to a movie theater? That sounds horrible. Well, like, I, what I, is like a like? movie theater with, like, reclining <laughs> seats, Jared. Because, you know, I don't like, you know, the stadium seating that's in, like, you know, only, like, 30 minutes away from me. The nearest movie theater to me with reclining seats is like six to eight hours away. Yeah. But like, that's my personal thing. So like, right. So like, you don't know the sacrifice <laughs> I've done and stuff. You don't know what You don't know what he sacrificed. I'll dude. never know what he sacrificed. You'll never know what Mark sacrificed. You'll never know. Let's transition over to Invincible. We finally got the end of season one. The synopsis says an adult animated series based on the Skybound image comic about a teenager whose father is the most powerful superhero on the planet. Stars Stephen Yoon, J.K. Simmons, Sandro, Zazie Beetz, Graeme Griffin, Kevin Michael Richardson, Walton Goggins, Jillian Jacobs, Zachary Quinto, uh, let's see, Jason Manzukis, Melise, Clancy Brown, Mark Hamill, Mahershala Ali, Max Burkholder. John Hamm has a couple episodes. Seth Rogen. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing somebody else of, of major significance here. Ezra Miller. Justin Roiland. Justin Roiland. Yeah, he plays Doug Cheston. You're absolutely right. This one, obviously, eight episodes. If you didn't watch episode eight. Stop everything you're doing right uh, yeah, now. Yeah, this, this is it. quite an episode. Um, We're going to talk about, I, I'd love to hear both of your ratings. This will be a spoiler review. We already talked about that on the front end. Jared, you're enthusiastic about it. Let's start with you. What's your rating of episode eight and what's your rating of the season as a whole? Oh, gosh. It's hard not to give it a six out of six. I'm trying to find a reason not to, and I think it has to be a six out of six. I I did not expect to like this as much as I did, and I binge watched all this in two days because <laughs> everybody's been talking about it. Like, you can't go anywhere without bumping into Invincible. And I'm like, is this really as good as people have been hyping it up to be? And oh, my gosh, I did not expect it to deliver like it did. The whole season, it had beats where it was a little long. Um, there were points where I was like, okay, just get to what we need to get to. So that maybe would give it a five for the season. But the delivery that they gave us in the final episode was so beyond perfect. Yeah, six out of six for the final episode. Mark, what are your sure. thoughts? I I loved this show and episode 
Uh, six is across the board. Um, it is something I didn't know existed until I was listening to a podcast where uh, Kirkman was on and talked about it. And I'm glad that it is now in my life. And I love. I don't. I don't know why. I like. I can't stand like gore and horror. But like hyper violence in cartoons, it's like I don't know why I enjoy it so much more, especially when it's superhero related. Riddle me that. Whoever wh- whoever psychiatrist that listens to this, do the diagnostic on all of us and let us know. No, don't, please don't diagnose the Infinity no, Bros. Please, no, we're good. We're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we don't Hard pass. That. But yeah, I, I loved it, and I loved how they ended the, this episode in the first season, where it's like, oh, here's all the bad people that you kind of forgot were still in this world that now is you know. Our Earth is a little less protected. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to sit at a 5.8 on the season. I'm going to go 6 out of six out of 6 on the episode. This is the best episode of the season. 5.8 simply because the animation still, to me, is a hair to... And I don't know if the word is cheap or just not fully done. There are moments where it takes me out of watching this series as a whole. I can sense that the animation was not as good as it could have been. I like the style. It's not the style I'm talking about. It's, it's the action pieces. And are you saying it kind of seems like, um, it, like I, yeah, like the, you kind of catching what I'm saying here. I, yeah, I don't know like how the to action, describe it like, without sounding snobby. There was, um, I think it's the last episode or episode seven where it felt like very much like a, the like nineties Dragon Ball Z fight scenes where it's like it's yes. in the distance and they're just like dots. It kind of not only that, but just like, it seems like it's just a, rendered image with a talking mouth at times and yeah and there is go ahead. there's a couple points where they cut to the 3d image um and it's it's so jarring when it happens and it's not long it's usually like a flash where they're like rescuing a civilian or whatever and it does shift from like 2d computer animated to 3d and it feels so weird and out of place and and you it's if you slow it down you can see it but it's so jarring that they do that right in the middle of these action sequences. Mm-hmm. And it, I had to pause and rewind it. Cause I was like, am I seeing what I'm thinking I'm seeing? And it, yeah, it's exactly what you're talking about. It like totally pulls you out of this scene. Yeah. And I, I do think that's a problem for this show because all the things we're talking about here about the positives of the show, which I've got plenty of them. I don't want to, I don't want to harp too long, but I, I do think it's, it's something they need to address the next two seasons. If I was Amazon, I would look at that and throw twice as much money at it and say the rest of this money goes towards animation and one or two new people to play these people you need to get. And I think that's exactly what, I mean, it's the first season and of, you know, content that a lot of people didn't know, I'm, I would just guess. Correct. So like, of course you're probably going to get, and you know, look at their cast or so maybe like you can kind of see maybe where they spent their money. Where now that's, you know, got the hype right. and the popularity, Amazon's be like, all right, we've kind of already got this all locked down and good. Now can we make the animation better? So like like you said, then here's more schmeckles to go towards better animation. Schmeckles. Let me talk yes. about the positives real quick because I, I harp negative. And you guys were glowing, so that's partly why I wanted to talk about that. This cast is unreal. One of the best casts of all the shows we've talked about all year. I think this trumps both WandaVision and... Falcon and the Winter Soldier in regards to their cast. I I think Kirkman, I've ne- Mark, you and I talked about this, I think on that first, when we reviewed the first couple episodes, Kirkman has developed a universe that is totally, absolutely going to be made in real life. There is no way this series does not get made in the form of a TV show or a movie series. There, there's no way it doesn't happen. It's going to happen after this now. I just absolutely believe it. We could see an invincible universe hypothetically from, I could see an AMC taking it. Cause I know Kirkman did a lot with AMC with the walking dead. I just think this, this is a great series. I was bawling in episode six when Omni man is hitting his son and he's asking him who he'll have hundreds of years from now. And his son is barely able to speak teeth gone organs out of his body and he says i'll have you dad i cannot wrap my head around how great this show is with that kind of writing it's it's why i think the art is kind of jarring jared it's why i'm like man you gotta gotta get gotta fix this because that can't take me out of the moment there's a lot of great creativity here 
This cast is dynamite. I hope they can keep them, Mark, because I'm like, how do you keep these guys around for a couple seasons? That's a lot of money. But Amazon has it. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Amazon will be losing any money anytime soon. No, no, no. <laughs> six out of six on the season. I'm still gonna give it a five point eight on on the I, I'm sorry. Six out of six on episode eight. It's the best episode of the season. Yeah. Bar none. It rewards everything that you built up for. It rewards this mystery with Omni Man if you haven't read the comic books. And Stephen Yoon is Mark Grayson. I just Perfect I can't casting. imagine somebody else doing it right now. I can't. Perfect casting. It's great. Just dynamite. Just great job. This is this this is a pleasant surprise, gentlemen. That's the thing too is like I didn't see any any of this coming. And like if you've if you've been around on our Discord and stuff, I I have gotten on this Image Comics kick and like indie comics in general for the past two years. And like this totally flew under my radar. Even when the series was announced, I was like, what like. What are the, what new stories did they have to tell that I haven't already read? You know what I mean? Because every superhero story feels like it's been done. And this has been compared to The Boys, which I think is an unfair comparison. This delivered on so many fronts that I wasn't prepared for. And like deep, heavy cuts. Um, I've talked about it before, but there's a comic called Middle West by Scotty Young, which is the perfect comic. Honestly, if I could recommend one comic to anybody, it's this one. And a lot of these have a lot to say about like what abuse looks like. And it's these very serious and like heavy themes in genres that you would not expect them to to be in. And especially Invincible. Invincible has so much to say about the cycle of abuse and what abuse looks like. Like Absolutely. Omni-Man was a hero. And it was so jarring to anybody to see him be this villain because he was a hero. He was a perfect father. He was a perfect husband. All these things. And I think, not to get too deep in the weeds, but like Invincible has a lot to say about people who call out abuse and are told like, well, he's a good husband. Just let him let it be. It's not as bad as you think it is. Or he's a good father. You know what I mean? And some of the stuff that they that they did with that final episode was like not at all what I expected. Yeah, uh, fantastic. They went heavy with this, and and I think it paid off. Yeah, I I would also highlight Walton Goggins as Cecil. Oh, I mean that guy fantastic. just absolutely crushes that role. Every there's not a single cast member, and and I was. When they put the cast in there that they did, um, uh, what is the what's the boyfriend who exposed stuff? Um, I can't think of his name, but anyways, like oh Jason Mraziekis, yeah, we, like his whole thing. I was like, this is a little weird, but he plays that role so perfectly. He does, um, and and he's uh, kind of at the end of the season. You're like you're rooting for him a little bit. Yeah, man, this whole the whole cast just paid in spades. They they knocked it out of the park. I will say too, I can't stand Amber. I think Amber sucks. <laughs> Yep. I have no idea where it goes in the comics. I'm assuming I really am assuming that he will end up with Adam Eve. Team I have, I have sure. literally nothing to like prove that this is Palm this guy. I've never read a comic. I, I just, if he doesn't end up with Adam Eve over her, Amber sucks. Amber knew he was a hero saving the day. And she's like, you just don't care about me. I'm like, get out of here. You suck. I'm going to be reading those graphic novels. I'll probably be reading ahead because yeah, are you that are you that I antsy to find me? Well, or? I is just I'm like I'm all I've got the first volume of it, so it's like I just want to know. I just like at this point, it's like it's already out there, and from I've read sure. online, it's like they're kind of they're kind of staying true to the comic, but like you know, changing up like maybe current stuff that's going on, political stuff. But you know, it's just it's so good. It's just like I I love it. That's awesome. You can check that out right now. Those comics are out, but also check this out on Amazon. The whole season, first season. Second season, we're going to be there day one. Real quick. Absolutely. Rank these real quick. The Boys, Umbrella Academy, Invincible right now. Where are you at on that, Mark? I don't know if the hype right now is going with it, but I would put one, one two, three. It's um, Invincible, Boys, Umbrella Academy. Same. Absolutely same. Um, but I'm really excited for the next season of Umbrella Academy. Can, how do they left that open the last season, so... Yeah, I'd probably go The Boys, Invincible, Umbrella Academy. That'd be the order I'd go in. I think The Boys is still better. Thinking about Umbrella Academy and just Netflix as a whole, when does Netflix start doing episodic drops instead of just the whole thing at once? Or are they going to always do the whole no, thing at once? Because that's, that's, that's their shtick. That, that's no, their they'll shtick. stay all at once because that's their shtick, I think. Because another podcast I was listening to were you know, how Disney plus is doing this and Amazon has, you know, Amazon does a little bit differently doing like the three first and then, you know, every week dropping a new one, it yeah. builds hype for the show. People talk about it. It's in the ether longer where, 
you know, you go back to like when Stranger Things was big, you would talk to people or, you know, when that drops or you know, new shows under Brel Academy, whatever. It's like, yeah, I might be able to watch eight episodes in a weekend, but like maybe you're busy and only get to watch two. So I can't talk to you. So it's like, oh, that's where our conversation ends, basically. And then it's definitely helped Disney Plus. I, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I, I do think a week to week thing for Invincible did not help Invincible. Really? Yeah. I, I actually don't think it helped Invincible. I, I think Invincible, I, to be honest, would forget. Even though I like the episodes, I would still forget. Because WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think it's Falcon and Winter Soldier that came out at the same time. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier, to me, I was like, I got to watch that first. Invincible was second to me. But that's oh, yeah. just my psyche. That's true. I mean, this is this is my watch. It was um, Falcon Winter Soldier, The Mighty Ducks, and Invincible when all those oh, lined up. Oh, yeah. That I, was how I, I still that's how I started it. Mighty Ducks. I need to watch that. You guys all have strong opinions on that. I gotta check that out. I like it. Uh, let's let's talk about the final show that just aired on May fourth. Oh, yeah. You talked about it at the start of the show. The Bad Batch uh, is a show about an elite and experimental group of clones that make their way through an ever changing galaxy in the immediate aftermath of the Clone Wars. We're back in the Star Wars universe. We're finally seeing this second Disney Plus series we've heard about. Obviously, if you're a huge fan of the Clone Wars series, this is pretty much an offshoot of that. Ming-Na Wen leads the cast, as well as Ness Batista, D. Bradley Baker, Michelle Ang, Archie Benhabi, uh, Nika Futterman, Ben Diskin, Kath Suchi, Nosher Dalal, uh, Matthew Wood, Cara Pifko, Freddie Prince Jr., Bob Bergen, Gwendolyn Yeo, Tom Kane, Bonnie Wilde, Andrew Cascino, and Stephen Stanton. I do not watch these shows, but I know that you two are very invested in them. So, Jarrett, would you rate, one, your hype of this season coming into it, and episode one? So, coming in, I and I talked about this a bit at the beginning, but Dave Filoni has this thing, and I don't know if it was just because he was tied down with Cartoon Network or, or Disney or whatever when he was producing these originally, but Clone Wars had a slow start. And I think we all can agree, like, it didn't get good till later on. Same with, and, and a lot of that was they chopped it around and moved this the episodes out of order or whatnot. And then even Rebels, Rebels is better at this, but it's still like, it takes a while to develop a story. And so coming into Bad Batch, I was like, okay, well, just prepare yourself. It's going to be a bit of a slog through the first couple episodes. And they hit the ground running in, in the same way that like we talked about praise for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like they gave us action up front. They went to town and Dave Filoni did this more with the story that he was trying to tell. Um, this episode was so beyond everything I expected. There was only one tiny, tiny nitpick thing that was frustrating for me. And it was and I understand why they did this. But Freddie Prince Jr. playing the younger version of yes. himself from Rebels was so horribly bad. Well, um, OK, I, I got to jump in really quick, Jared. I thought Please the same do. thing. Yeah. I was like, why do they have like I didn't I didn't I didn't connect the dots right away. I was like, why do they have an adult man voicing this child? <laughs> yeah. And then it, then it clicked later on. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's why I felt. So so everything else was so spot on. Um, they hit the story right away. I thought it was going to be a lot longer before they address some of the things like where does Bad Batch go after Order 66? Does it affect them? What does their team look like going forward? And Dave Filoni, man, to his credit, he's not afraid to mess things up. Like he swung for the fence and he knocked it out of the park. I did not think he was going to do the story that he did. And, and I'm excited to see what they do going forward. Honestly, like I trust Dave Filoni with the entire Star Wars universe. Make him the Kevin Feige. Did you watch episode two today? No, is episode two out right now? Yeah, they did May the 4th drop, and then it's every Friday moving forward. So like the second I thought it was tonight. Wednesday releases, man. I was like hyped for episode two. Oh my gosh, please do. Mark, tell us about episode two without spoiling it. Go for it. It's like kind of just going, well, everything Jared said about episode one, I'm just, I'll piggyback on all that. He he said that just how I, even better what I would have said, because Jared's amazing. Um, He's well, okay. Ep- He's above average or best. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um He's the, oh, the, best, he's the best. best AI I've ever had Thanks, buddy. in my life. Beep, boop, bop. Eat your heart out, Siri. The, the one thing, like, without spoiling anything, the one thing I kind of enjoyed the most about episode two is that, hey, we're now a galactic empire instead of a republic and how the dynamics of stuff change and how like quickly they have just become this like 
Iron Curtain, Iron Fist organization. And how, you know, the Bad Batch is basically learning how, or, you know, figuring out how they're going to have to, like, kind of be on the run always. Or, you know, basically give up on everything they know and just live on the Outer Rim or find a different way of life. That's kind of the gist. And I think that's, it's a good starting off point. So I'm really curious of what they do the rest of the season. But yeah, episode two was another banger that was great. So this is the thing they, they do this. They've done this well in the comics because the comics, the Marvel comics with Star Wars are kind of hit or miss. And a lot of that has to do with an artist that I don't care for. But one of the things that I liked is the way that they handle the transition from the Republic to the Galactic Empire is like the snap of the of the Star Wars universe. Like it just absolutely completely changes everything. And that transition period is so interesting to play in. And so having this from the lens of like these clones who who to some degree don't have those inhibitor chips in place is a the best way Dave Filoni could possibly do this. Mark, are you are you in the same camp as Jared as Filoni needs to own all this with Star Wars? Or do you think he should just stay on the creative side? Because I, I do I, where I will kind of step back from that. I, and again, I haven't watched Bad Batch, but my to the Filoni feedback is my only pushback to that when I hear that, Jared, is he does a lot of the direct creative process stuff. And I know Kevin Feige does a lot of that with Marvel, too. I know like the story is he's on set every single day. He looks at the dailies every day. I don't know if I want a Filoni behind the scenes doing the producing role. Like I do think he needs a strong number well, two. There's that a reason why the business portion. There's why John Favreau brought him in for Mandalorian. Well, yeah, I mean, and maybe Favreau, maybe the answer is Favreau with that, right? Maybe Favreau is the guy that's got the connections. I know we've talked about that on previous episodes. So too. this could, you could do dual it where it's like, you got the connections, but where Dave Filoni, I think is a genius on this whole thing is he has such knowledge of probably the whole star Wars canon and universe where he's able to tie stuff in. And just tell a good story. I think that's yeah, where things he, out he of left shines. field that only the the deep cut guys and gals care about. Yeah, right. I don't know. I think I think I think Favreau should be the, the head charge of it. To be honest, I think it should be him and Filoni should just be lead producer. Right. I mean, like that's kind of how I look at it. It's, but I don't know. I I get that. I think they're different. I think they're two different things. Too. But you can have MCU, two different world. You can have the animated universe and the live action and they can still be separate and still be interconnected and still have two different guys that or people who lead it and just communicate well and respect each other. And that's what do you it really think comes down to. Filoni thinks of Kathleen Kennedy. Like, do you think he, he do you think he likes her or do you think he's just tolerates her? Filoni understands Star Wars so well that there's no way he can't be bothered by the absolute massacre of the sequel trilogy yeah, he, he like there's no some there's no way that doesn't bother him yeah for sure i think to his credit and, and maybe to your point too is like john favreau when when he collected the cast and the crew and the directors that he did for mandalorian he gave us like uh bryce dallas bryce dallas hayward am i saying howard, that right howard howard she knocked it out of the park with every episode that she did taika watiti did his episode like he brought in so many amazing talented people that i think like he has those connections and those resources that dave filoni may not have brought them in so i think yeah there is something to say for for leaving him on a creative lead for the at least the mandalorian side for long term yeah i i think he should be more a behind the scenes guy personally and then he would work he could work with guys like i mean he obviously feige owes him so i mean you could pull into the i think the marvel universe just grows and grows and grows so then the Star Wars universe can leverage that and grab people from that and pull them into theirs, too. Because yeah. who's not going to... Like, why wouldn't Chloe Zhao want to do a Star Wars thing? Yeah. Right? She she would love Absolutely. that. She just made No Man Land on $5 million budget, and she won Best Director. You tell me she couldn't take $200 million for a Star Wars movie and crush it? Come on, dude. And what I love about this is you don't need to... Ha- like, just look at The Mandalorian. You don't need to have... Or what Mandalorian really showed. You don't have to have a Jedi to be a good Star Wars story. You don't need a Skywalker. And when you leave it alone. Uh, don't say that now. All right. Now hold oh, on. No, 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 no. They did. They actually did say they needed a Skywalker, Jarrett. They brought Luke, but like uh, Luke wasn't the focal point. Agreed. But Luke was never the. But the argument that 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 was what they chose to do. Like they sure. still could not disconnect themselves from the St- Skywalker family is all I'm saying. 
Not sure. saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that's what they chose to do. Fair enough. And I still, to this day, can't believe they pulled it off. Pretty remarkable. Um, any other comments on Bad Batch? Mark, you obviously recommend the show. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're the only one that's seen both episodes. I, in, in the alternate universe, yeah, I know. In the alternate universe, when I first saw the first episode, not alternate universe, um, I was like, oh, 70 minutes. Wow. Max would have loved if it was WandaVision that was 70 minutes. That was my first thought <laughs> when I started it. When you sent that to our group chat, I busted out laughing. thought it was great. I probably still wouldn't have, though, because WandaVision wasn't good. Well, you know, we have a few episodes that kind of beg to differ, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. We had a fun ride. The ride through WandaVision was fun. I hope Mephisto shows up in Bad Batch. Just uh, a big F you to Marvel fans. No, Mephisto's got to show up in Mighty Ducks first. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Tie the Mighty Ducks <laughs> in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, man, that'd be great. All right, uh, let's head over to the top five. We're going in three, 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 Announcements and moments from our perspective of the MCU trailer. Mark, we're going to start with you. Talk of us. The Mark, we're going to start with you. Tell us your top five sequentially, five through one. I'm sorry. Did I not get the memo? We just we don't back and forth it anymore. We don't. We're trying to cut back on time so people don't see the long run time and go. I don't want to listen to you. Well, that we're just on, we'd only lose my wife, my beautiful wife Kelly, and Elliot Weens if we did that. So, <laughs> fair enough. Do you say my beautiful wife Kelly so she has to stick around to listen to that, or are you just that much of a great husband? Which one is it, or is it both? I'm just that great of a husband. I'm sorry. I'm not going to apologize actually for being a great husband. Max, do you think he wakes up in the morning? He, he, like, rolls over, and he's like, my beautiful wife, Kelly, what do you want for breakfast today? I totally think that, yeah. Like, every time he addresses What him. I would love is if Mark was in this big meeting, and he was, like, talking, and then his boss, like, boss's boss goes, Mark, your wife, Kelly, how's she doing? Oh, my beautiful wife, Kelly? She's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mark, go ahead. All right, so my number five, um, I have Fantastic Four is my number five. We didn't talk about it, but yes, that was officially an announcement again. Uh, number four is Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, three is Thor 4. Um, then Shang-Chi, number two. And then my number one, it's Doctor Strange. That's my number one. Like, I'm like, I know Max doesn't like how WandaVision ended, but Doctor Strange 2 is gonna, is gonna solve all our questions. It about is, I, I will say this. I will say that I do anticipate that will be. I anticipate that there's a chance that could happen. And I, and I hope we get Agatha back. I don't know if she comes back in Doctor Strange, but I, she does she come better. back. It'd be cool if her and Mordo teamed up together. Ooh, that'd be wild. And I hope we get a little like insight of like, obviously Bucky and Sam had to have known that some stuff was going on in New Jersey. So, like, I would like to eventually, some point in the MCU where they talk about the guy, the people who were still on Earth when that was going down, have a discussion about that. So, please. Hopefully, it happens in Doctor Strange, too. Uh, I'll go next year. Number five is Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. We didn't talk about it, but I'm pumped for Kang, man. I think Kang is. I oh, think. That's right. He's the villain in that. I think Kang is going to steal the show in this. I really do. I'm pumped about it. Number four is Doctor Strange. Mark, I'm, I'm echoing everything you're saying with Doctor Strange. It's I can't put it like in the I, I can't put these two in the top three because there's nothing different for me to know other than the date that they're coming out. So I guess I'm pumped for them, but I can't put them in top three for that. Number three. I got one thing for you because, we, yeah, we didn't talk about Ant-Man and Quantum Media and stuff. Um, do you think King will be the big bad? In the in the long run for like the Avengers? Or I think is he kind of be like a I think we're going to see Kang in like a month in Loki. OK. I think okay. I, I would bet a small fortune on that. They've been doing so much with Young Avengers that they have to, like, establish him before that launches. Uh, no question. No yeah. question. Like the insight. That's why I was wondering. I think I think Avengers Endgame would have been five. So I think Avengers six. No, Endgame would have been four. Yep. Yeah. Avengers Avengers five. The Avengers are going to die. 
disassembled and then immediately followed up with like a young Avengers. Yeah, I think it's either Wanda kills them or Kang wins. And young Kang comes back, assembles the young Avengers and says, you need to come with me. We have to save the universe, blah, 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 blah. And he has like one old Avenger that, you know, whether it might be an old Anthony Mackie or like old it's Hawkeye. Oh my gosh. Or, or it's Hawkeye, gotta be Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. It's gotta be Ronan Hawkeye. Oh yeah. Oh. I mean, I, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do. I mean, you could, you could do lady Thor. There's a lot you could do. It's Thor. You can say Thor. I'm just calling it Lady Thor for those that are not fully prepared for that yet, Jared. Sure. They're not prepared sure. for that. Um, yeah, sorry, I need to keep going with my list. Sorry. We were we were, we got on the we got on that train. Number three is Eternals. I, I think Eternals, I'm gonna be honest with you, after watching Nomad Land, my hype for Eternals has increased. I really like Nomad Land. I think Marvel is gonna you're gonna see so much hype around Chloe Zhao directing that. Just buckle up with that. They're, they're not going to be able to help themselves. Uh, Black Pan- Panther, Wakanda Forever, I talked that, but I'm with you. Uh, Shang-Chi, man. Who would have thought that I'd be pumped about a Shang-Chi movie? I think it looks great. I think it looks absolutely great. We're going to get a real kung fu movie, and I'm pumped about it. So Shang-Chi, number one for me. Jared, close us out. Well, it's hard to top my beautiful friend Mark and just Max, <laughs> but... Number five, I have Eternals. Looks great. Um, not much more to say there. I'm just excited to see what they can do. Cast is great. Chloe Zhao is doing fantastic. Number four, you know I got to give love to my boy Taika Waititi. Uh, love and Thunder. I'm excited because every time I think I know what he's doing, like with Ragnarok, it's never what I expect. And I'm I'm excited to see how he warps and twists my brain. Um, number three is Shang-Chi. I Shang-Chi. started watching Kim's Shang-Chi. Uh, I started watching Kim's Convenience, and my love for Simu has, like, gone through the roof. Fantastic actor. I follow him on Twitter. Arguably one of the best Twitter follows you can have. He's kind of, he's not dropped as many, like, funny tweets lately, but when he does, oh, they're so good. Well, I, do you think do you think he's bracing right now to, like, not say something stupid coming up with the movie? Yeah, and, and I think, like, too, he's, he's coming to terms with the fact that, like, he's going to be a household name. Um, because he he like did this whole long tweet about him seeing himself at Walmart as a new toy and like how jarring that would be. Um, so, yeah, I think he's like kind of letting it all wash over him for a moment. Oh, dude, and obviously, Kim Scamini's just had their finale. Like, if this was not during the COVID years, I bet this movie would have made a billion dollars worldwide. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, number two is Fantastic Four. I don't think we touched on this at all yet, but in little bits, there's some news that John Krasinski is getting involved as Mr. Fantastic. I don't know if we have that confirmed yet or not. Um, what what article did I share that uh or is it? Did from? you share it? You yeah, may have just shared it. Giantfreakingrobot.com. Love that. Ugh. I hope back it's true. Because they've been put it in the show notes. No, I will not. The, no, 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 no. The artists <laughs> that's not coming the in the artists show notes, in people. Marvel Comics have been willing this into being for so long. Like every time anybody draws Mr. Fantastic, it's like a grizzled old John Krasinski. It's not. And they've been happening. doing this for like five or six years. I just don't um, see it happening. He's too old. No, absolutely not. They absolutely have to not. pick somebody younger on this one. I, I really nope. think they do. You're wrong. You're thinking they're going to go young? Wrong. I do. I think they're going to go young. I This is this is a family that's got to be there for 20 years. No way. Yeah, man. I fan fantastic that take. No, dude. They have to be. They got to be around <laughs> a long time. Number one is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Just because I'm excited to see. They've done so much and they've given us so much with Wakanda that I'm excited to see where they go from here. I'm not excited to see how they deal with everything with Chadwick Boseman. I think no matter what, that's going to be hard and heavy. But like what a post having Chadwick Boseman around Black Panther looks like is something that's of interest to me. Um, yeah, and that's my top five. We'll see. Yeah, well, this is good. Mark, uh, do you think at some point you're ever going to admit that WandaVision sucked at the end? Um, no, but I, I do believe in the last time we really talked about this, that you got to give it like a month or two and rewatch it. And I'm I'm going to rewatch it pretty soon because I've... I want to see if that theory holds up that I created. So we'll find out. The nice thing is you'll be honest about it. If you don't, I will give you yeah. that credit. 
for sure. You play the beta, I mean, but, I'm, but you will. You will. I'm not gonna. Me. I'm not gonna lie on here about me liking or disliking something. So. Whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever. I, I, I don't know why you would have read that. Like, why would I? No, How whatever. I'm just saying whatever. Just said whatever. It's all. It's no big deal. You guys are so cute when you fight. Max wants me to hate WandaVision so bad. Oh, so I do. Can have I, I want somebody else to just come alongside and agree with me instead of. It's the cool thing to like WandaVision. It's like, oh, WandaVision's so cool. It's not. It's not. It was cool in the moment. It's not anymore. I think. Whatever. We'll, we'll find out. I was left with a great episode seven, and that's it. That's all I got. I was left with a line that was great, and then White Vision leaving. That was what I was left with. <laughs> Hot garbage. See ya. Bye. Yeet. Deuces. The best thing, the absolute best thing to come out of WandaVision, bar none, is the, the Vision memes that we've been getting. Like, him as the Vision is so good. Jared, real quick before we go. You didn't review uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. What'd you think of that season? Oh my gosh, fantastic. Wait, no, I did. I was on the final episode. Were you? Yes. I thought you said you hadn't and been on are... in a while, though. You said uh, you I said think you I hadn't caught... been on in a while. I caught that one, but I missed a lot of the ones in between. Is what oh, I was right, okay. So, because remember, you and I disagreed about the Falcon suit because he's got the weird hat. Oh, that's right. That you were like, oh, no, the ears. Falcon suit looks stupid. Yeah, that's right. It looks so bulky it and looks uncomfortable. It so bad. Oh, it has man. the weird, like, It, it doesn't look like thing. the 1980s Falcon suit. Yeah, I love that. That's oh, right. please, don't get me started on that suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if amazing. they brought that, oh, woo. Jared, uh, where can people find you this week on Twitch? What are you doing this week? I'm not sure. We had some technical difficulties last time, but I'm shooting for maybe Enter the Gungeon next week. We've been having a blast with some of these different series that we've been doing. Um, Christian and I actually were thinking about streaming tonight at the time of recording this, if this didn't go too late. Um, so she, you may see her on a Team Rocket Tuesday this week. Nice. Check us out. Follow us on Twitch. Just check the link in our show notes for that. Mark, you watching anything crazy this week? Any weird movies? Um, I'm thinking about what, starting a... I just I was gonna call it Jupiter Ascending, but that's not what it's called because that's a movie. No, Jupiter. Um, uh, is it Legacy? Yeah, Jupiter Legacy. On Netflix, I'm very intrigued on that show because you know, Whole. superhero related and kind of yeah. it seems like it's gonna be different. So, well, we expect a full that. report next week. All right. Um, we also have a special guest next week. If you're in the Magic: The Gathering community, you'll recognize this. We. Barring any complications, we should have Tomer from uh, MTG Goldfish. So that's exciting. So potentially two episodes next oh, week. Oh, that's going to be great. That's going to be done. Yeah, man. I'm I'm through the roof excited. Yeah, we're great. It's going to be fun. As we said earlier, you can check us out on Discord. Please, if you value us, and we value you if you've made it this far, by the way, we'd love it if you leave us, leave us an iTunes review. Not only are you going to get entered for that Infinity Gauntlet, but it just helps us out, promotes us, helps us get seen more. Because we really, really are loving doing this. And we really appreciate the Infinity Bros universe. You guys have been great. As always, we love you guys 3000. And we will talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.